Hello students, welcome to the series of video lectures on world history, particularly on the topic of industrial revolution. So in the past couple of videos, I have explained what exactly the meaning of industrial revolution and how the industrial revolution got raises like emergence of industrial revolution and its factors and why did only Great Britain have seen the rise of industrial revolution over half of the century rather than in the other countries of Europe. So in this video, I am going to give a comparative analysis of emergence of industrial revolution in three different countries that is particularly the British and Japan and also the Eurasian country called Russia. So in this video, I am going to explain you the differentiation of different features of industrial revolution for example, fundamental causes of industrial revolution in these three different countries and the ideology behind the emergence of industrial revolution in, in respect to countries and the role of a state and role of market forces and finally I'll end up this topic with what is the nature of innovation that's a part of this industrial revolution so let's go to the features so I'm coming to the features so while I'm taking the first fundamental feature that's called fundamental cause of industrial revolution if I take the British industrial revolution what is the fundamental cause of industrial revolution in Great Britain it intends to increase in demand of British products because these products were compelled because of high demand it has and also these products compelled British manufacturers to use machinery in order to get high rate of production so that it can meet with the supply to the rise in demand of such products. So that is the reason why the industrial revolution has flourished in Great Britain. And if you take the East Asian country called Japan. So in the concept of Japanese industrial revolution, the fundamental cause of industrial revolution is to raise its and to restore its national prestige. Like in the last video, I have explained you how the industrial revolution have started in the Japan. Just it has a background of national humiliation by American captain, sea cap, I mean ship captain. So, in order to restore its national prestige, the Japanese country, the Japanese government has intended to emerge as an industrial revolution power. So, in such a way, the industrial revolution got commenced in Japan. And if you take the case of Russia, so the fundamental cause of industrial revolution in Russia is to meet the needs of internal development. So as growing aspiration in such a large country that is particularly with a huge population and huge aspiration in such a Eurasian country and uh, which is further after 50 years it has been called as one of the I mean the supreme power on par with the lines of USA as a part of Cold War. So in order to fulfill its needs of internal development the Russia has adopted its industrial revolution and particularly it has adopted this industrial revolution after the great Russian revolution 1917 which I have discussed in the last video for you and if I come to the next concept what is the ideology behind industrialization particularly in these three countries if I take the case of Great Britain the ideology is driven by the capitalism Capitalism was the ideology where the profit making is the main intention and in the capitalism the concept of supply meeting with the demand is entirely based on market forces that is we call it as the supply and demand the concept of rate of production is entirely depends upon these market forces that is called supply and demand in the market which are very volatile and dynamic enough so if you take the concept of Japan Hopefully the same concept of capitalism ideology driven the industrial revolution in this country called Japan. And if you take the Russian model of industrial revolution, the ideology was driven by communism. Communism was the ideology whereby the whole resources will be distributed on a rapid scale to its citizens on the equity basis. So this is the ideology behind the commencement of industrial revolution of di in different countries. And if you take the next feature, that is, what is the role of state? So what is the role of a state here? So in Britain, the role of a state played a facilitator character. 
So the state played a facilitator role by enacting suitable laws. By enacting suitable laws, the state, I mean the government of Great Britain acted as a facilitator to the industries through enacting suitable laws so that the rate of production would be comfortable enough to increase, would be comfortable enough to meet the raising demands. So that is the role played by the British government. And if you take the role played by the um, Japanese government, the role of the Japanese government was important because Japanese government provided capital to established factories and private entrepreneurs because capital was the main thing over there. And if you just uh, go back to the era where the industrial revolution is still to commence in Japan, then the Japanese had invested their capital in land during first half of 19th century. And there was hardly, I mean, there was severe crunch of capital available with the people to set up factories. So where capital was one of the important input for the factors of production, in out of four we have discussed. So the Japanese government has played a very important role in providing capital to these factories and entrepreneurs, private entrepreneurs. That is the role played by the Japanese government. And if you take the role played by the Russian government, the role of a state was very important here because the factories were completely state owned. They were completely public sector enterprises. Okay, so we can just sense the nature of the economy over here that is a very closed economy whereby the state decides what to produce, how much to produce, to what extent that production should be distributed to the density of population. That is the role played by the government in Russia. And if you take the concept of role of market forces in the industrialization of different countries, if you take the concept of British, this was very important. Because as I told you earlier, the forces of demand and supply directed every economic activity in this country because the ideology followed here is capitalism. So as a part of the capitalism, we have a doctrine that is called which uh, like talks about free trade that is called doctrine of laissez fair was followed. So if you ever just come out uh, with a term called doctrine of laissez fair the very next important term you need to strike in your mind is it's a concept related to free trade free trade so just um, like liberal in uh, imposition of taxes liberal imposition of taxes on imports and exports so that uh, there will there will be a mutual trade commerce and economic benefits of two parties involved in this uh, doctrine and the same doctrine of classes fair was followed by the japanese government but if you take the concept of this Russian government, the entire market forces is based on the policy designed by the government. That is, it is modeled by the state. So as I told you just a couple of minutes ago that how much to produce and what to produce was completely based on the policy designed by the state. And if you take the concept of nature of innovation, so if you take the concept of nature of innovation in the case of Great Britain, it is completely and purely endogenous innovation. And I have explained to you in the last video why only Britain, what are the different factors involved in coming out into this endogenous um, innovations. So, where the society is progressive, liberal, adopted democratic principles, where all the people are free enough to think, free enough to work very really very hard and uh, um, had enough uh, belief in protestant ethics so these are the different factors why the britishers could able to get into this indigenous innovations and if you take the co case of the japanese government the concept is very interesting it's entirely the reverse engineering whatever the procedure involved in the innovation the, that procedure will be carefully observed step by step and the same procedure will be just uh, implemented, enacted to produce the same thing by the concept of this reverse engineering that you need, you will be going to implement this stepwise from the back to front. So it is like end to first model, reverse engineering model adopted by the Japanese government. And if you take the concept of Russian government, if you take the concept of Russian government, initially it was um, dependent upon the imports of machinery and technology 
from the countries particularly from britain where it used to maintain good relations at those times and eventually it was indulged into the indigenous innovation so because this indigenous innovation is was absent initially so and moreover every each and every economic decision was completely based on state policy whereby the imports policy import taking the i mean importing the uh, technology and uh, machinery was the policy then and there and then after the russian government has uh, adopted the import substitution policy with its indigenous innovation so this is the concept guys which i have explained to you in this video and in the coming video i am going to explain you what are the different impacts caused by this industrial revolution and i'm going to explain you different dimensions on and each and every impact on diverse dimensions i'm going to explain and followed by the questions on this topic whereby you can have some good practice mains mains answer writing practice on this topic so hope you like the video follow me for the next video thank you so much